All right, next we have Jay Lapache, who is a professional librarian and digital oriented content manager, experienced working in a variety of organizational settings, requiring strong creative problem solving, technical and interpersonal skills. She sets up uh, databases and workflow oh, okay. systems in libraries and is an expert at identifying ways to streamline workflow. And we are excited to have her here to talk about preservation of corporate information. Thank you, Jen. Thanks. Um, and one thing I've been doing a lot lately is content management and helping organizations set up content management plans. Um, all right, so this is not a content management strategy. This shows pallets of documents owned by Pacific ba Gas and Electric Company that um, talk about their gas pipelines. And you might know that in 2010, there was an explosion in San Bruno, California that destroyed almost an entire neighborhood, killed eight people and injured over 50. So this shows pallets of documents <laughs> at the Cal Palace, which is a venue on the border of San Francisco, and some date back to the 1920s. They didn't have them in one location. They had to go to every department and say, give us everything you have on any gas pipeline. And then they brought them to the Cal Palace, hired 400 people to work 24 hours a day because this is March 4th and they had to respond to the PUC by March 15th. This is not a content strategy. <laughs> so, most companies don't have a chief content management officer and it's certainly about cash flow for startups but the effects can be keenly felt when a company becomes more mature or when they have a problem like that san bruno explosion so my content management plans include the following and i think that preservation starts with your content management strategy and the first thing is culture. The culture in every organization is really important. And the culture may have nothing to do with content management, but your content management will fail if you don't take into account the culture. So I try and disrupt workflow as little as possible. And then people, um, oh, here we go. People are the most important part. People are smart. They will break your system or go around it if it doesn't work for them. And you have to take their ideas into consideration. And most importantly, they need to feel like their ideas are heard and that their specific needs are being met. And that takes a lot of sensitivity because some of their ideas aren't that good. I look at the process, silos, repositories, essential sources of content and when it's needed, what the desired format, all these sorts of things so that the teams can accomplish their objectives. And in reviewing systems, you can find things that somebody bought and never used that might help. So review all the systems and tools currently in place, meet with people and survey users. A lot of you guys have talked about that, but talk to vendors too, because they don't wanna lose their contract with the company. So they might be willing to change entrenched tools or modify them over a period of time to help achieve your goals. So this is what I call the Google Drive Dropbox box problem. So a lot of startups, they let their people save stuff anywhere. And the only tool that I've found that can accommodate all of those is open science framework. Now that doesn't mean there aren't others and I'm sure you will tell me if there are, but you can just click a box and if you're using open science framework as a content management system, then those systems will be included. Um, also taxonomies are really important. What are the internal ones that exist? And it might be just words that people are using. Are there commercial ones that will help? And you have to look at metrics and consider how well they're functioning so that people can find things in search. Also, there's a lot of content that's cross-departmental that people don't consider. People own their content. They say, this is mine and no one else uses it when that's not true. I mean, all of you use a vacation policy at your organizations and none of you created it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so audit and control 
people like this, but almost no organization that I've worked with has got to this point in their content management strategy. The key is to have allies in audit, legal, security, and HR because they're really important in any content strategy effort. So um, there's a lot of other considerations, but one thing I've been thinking about is whether blockchain, the blockchain technology can circumvent some of the content management requirements. So Jeff was talking about this yesterday. Is he still here or did he go? Oh, darn. Um, so, so it started out with Bitcoin, as you all know, but it's now being tested by Walmart to track the supply chain of their fruit and yeah, fruit. I don't know if it includes anything else. So their, their tags have information on them that tracks where they go. So theoretically you could scan it when you get it to your house and you could know that it was really grown in the US and it was received in New Mexico or wherever. But can we do that with digital information and documents? Is there some kind of digital identifier that could be scanned or could be smart enough to be modified every time it changes? So if I email a document to Natalie, could that identifier say, oh yeah, you emailed this to Natalie? So these are all the other considerations that I take into account. For us in California, disaster planning is really important because a lot of Documents are in basements and we don't have a lot of basements, but the ones that do fall in an earthquake. So it's really not a good thing. But the most important challenge that that I've identified is information. It doesn't have a boss or a champion and it needs one in order so that it's not ignored. I mean, all of you have said, oh, nobody thinks about this until the end of the process. And that poor information city, they're going, what about us? What about us? So academics and corporations can get together. And I think it's really important to not just talk among yourselves as academics, but talk to people in corporate America as well. So for the first thing, all this funding comes from all of our tax dollars. So the more the merrier, right? Think about how your ideas and tools can help your colleagues in corporate America who aren't here today. And it's a really great opportunity to get together with people from other environments to collaborate. Because if you know what they're doing, they will have an idea that you can use. And know the most common software. Don't rely on obscure or academic-centric technology. Most law firms, for example, don't run Unix. Know the lingo. Do you know what KPI means? And are you familiar with the use of metrics in law firm environments? build repository agnostic tools and build tools that plug into common software. And we consider the cost of transactions or touches. So we might not buy a system because it requires too many touches. There has to be more automation. A lot of times companies will hire a consultant because they don't have time to set it up or train people or do anything with it. And auto metadata nudging or generation is really good as well. So that's it. Any questions, please contact me. I have a, a content management sort of summary that I can sell you if you're interested. <laughs> but I'll give you a two-page summary for free. Um, does anybody have any questions? Mark? Okay, so we talked a little about this last thing that's in there, but so going into an organization that doesn't have a data management plan like you know, the standard one as well, I'll, we'll never get our people to do that. So we, what's more effective? I mean, to find a, a champion at that level, or like you're saying, to maybe establish a mandate from above that? You have to do a combination, and it really depends on the culture because um, people are going to go around any mandate, but if they're on board, which is why I say to survey and talk to them, there'll be less, uh, less people going around. You will always have people who are going around your your content management plan. And a lot of, uh, at least law firms use something called a document management system. I don't know if you use that in your organizations. It's, they're kind of a pain in the neck because they won't let you save your document until you fill out a profile, which helps you find it later, theoretically. But people hate that. So there needs to be more automatic generation of those profiles. Yes, ma'am. 
Actually, something you've talked about that um, I wasn't as aware of was how important content management is and a data and software preservation strategy, not just for supporting legal discovery, but for companies preparing to go IPO. Can you yeah. talk to us a little bit about what happens when things are everywhere and it's time to do an IPO? Well, the SEC has certain documents they require when a company is preparing to go for an IPO, and they're not always in the finance department. And um, you have to gather them together, but if you don't know where they are or what system they're on, I mean, I had a client who had stuff on Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, and their engineering department had it, all their stuff on a wiki, so they didn't really know. They needed pieces from all of there, and they couldn't search across all of them. They didn't know about OSF. <laughs> um, so they were sort of stuck and they didn't have content owners either so it's, it's important to have somebody who's a content owner in each department or each section to find things when there's an important event happening in your company and pg and e that's an important event that whole pipeline thing i mean they got criminal sanctions against them and nobody wants that so, I mean, I think that something like Open Science Framework can help, but corporations don't know about it. And I will now evangelize, but it, there needs to be more interoperability. I don't think that Google Drive and Box are bad. I think they're really good, but in a corporate environment, they can really be a problem. Yeah, um, so from the outside looking in, I haven't really worked with corporations much, but it seems like corporations, at least a general sense that like they're, their information or their data is an asset and yep. really needs to be treated as such. Yep. We don't see that as much in, in universities or in academia, or at least with, with research data. And I wonder if there are things that we can learn from how corporations sort of see what they have as an asset to translate that to the university environment. Well, what I would do to start, okay, so I think that your information is an asset. I mean, why are you talking about preserving it if it's not an asset? Yeah, but I'm talking about preserving it as a librarian, not as a university administrator. Right. <laughs> so look at what has come out of some of that research data. So maybe somebody has done, maybe there have been five projects, let's say, I don't know, that have ended up as something that gets sold or something that has a patent that's really valuable for whatever reason, maybe it's the next great cancer drug or something, and say, we didn't know, to your administrators, we didn't know that these five things would be so valuable. They're from our data. We need to preserve more stuff because we don't know what they're going to be in the future. And yeah, they're going to say, well, we don't know, so why should we care? But well, you don't know. And you might say, oh, well, just throw, throw this up on some open source place and somebody else takes it and gets the big payoff. I mean, in the end, I hate to say it, but a lot of it is about money. So you don't have it, so you can't preserve it. But if you don't preserve it, you're not going to get it in the future. And you have to start small. All of these projects are iterative. So you're not going to create one solution all at once to say, okay, let's get a really good thing and then let's modify it until we have something great. Does that answer? Yeah, in as much as, as we can answer. No yeah. Point, I, think right. that's, that's a good I have a friend who likes to say people are messy <laughs> and this applies here as well. More questions? Yeah, thanks. Thank you.